Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Sinister 2 movie thoughts. I'm going to jump right into my last minute notes and start with the ending of the film. I quite liked that, you know, in the first one we have this ending that is tragic. It's, it's this kind of classical tragedy thing of you kind of know where this is going. This is he's doing exactly what he shouldn't be doing. We, we understand why. He is a flawed protagonist, but we, we can understand where he's coming from. And thus, it was, you know, of course it ended like this. But this, we still have a flawed protagonist, but it's a very different situation, and you might say that it's not really her fault. She's not, she's not knocking on, you know, Bugul's door, where, you know, Ellis, you know, moving right into the murder house, you know, and just watching movie after movie after movie, and all of this you know, looking looking further and further into it and waiting for far too long before he agrees to let it go and try to protect his family. And by then, it is too late. He has stared into the abyss for too long and the abyss is... the abyss has him. In this, she didn't really... she for most of the film, she doesn't really know or quite believe that, you know, the, the former deputy, the, the, I'm, I'm gonna go with so, as I refer to him in the review, he doesn't tell her what's going on. He, you know, it's like, would she really believe if I said, and, you know, so, yeah, she does not know what is, what is happening and when she does leave the house she doesn't realize why that's a bad thing and she's not doing it to excuse me to leave this house of supernatural evil she's doing it for a completely different reason but you can't always that's that's you know you can you can explain that you didn't know that's what was going on as much as you like but the ritual was fulfilled and so so the fact that yeah what i'm getting at is the family survived this time and that was a really great i am so glad they didn't go for the the same you know, overall ending as the first. And where the first was this kind of classical tragedy of it had to end like that, and then it does, and it's devastating. In this, it's like, no, they don't deserve it because nobody did. They, they didn't, you know, or nobody. At that point, we realized that it's Zack. It's only Zack. And why is it Zack? Because of Clint. Because they are two of a kind. And the, it's really, really difficult to feel bad that Clint is being burned. I was sitting there thinking, can he burn Clint and then be stopped? Because that might not bother me too much. And it, we're probably not you know, supposed to be able to really think clearly at that point. But yeah, anyway. So yeah, we have this small victory. It was it was possible to save this family and yeah the 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 very ending then with 
the return of the ham radio. And I mean, the, the, the ending jump scare was the same. Bagul breaks the fourth wall, and the movie ends. And it works so much better this time. I still can't quite... I, I don't know what exactly was supposed to be in the first that he was... Like, in the first, you've just seen the ritual go through. So, yeah, why, why he then shows himself to the audience isn't... But, you know, in this, suddenly it's almost a POV of... So, and, yeah, he, you know, that's, and, and, yeah, I, I, like I said in the review, I feel like Scott Derrickson may have looked over some things in the first one and said, you know, they didn't work quite as well. I can make them work in this one. I also, I am so glad that the, the children did not have the, the, you know, dead-ish faces from right away, that they only got them near the end. And the way their children were used in this were so much better. The, yeah, I'll, I'll get more into that, but. I guess the idea with the radio is, it's possible that the new university guy did not burn that ham radio or he did, and it just wasn't enough. Much like the films in the first one. Maybe, maybe he had looked too much into Bugul by then, and it was too late. But at first, the recording is of the two of them saying, it's the children, the children. And then suddenly, it's the children in this schoolyard taunt kind of voice repeating those words and suddenly this radio is there and so as we were told earlier he found you he, he just used a different portal because so had been quite a problem to him and he was taking matters into his own hands at this point he had already gotten rid of Zack after he failed him which I also I thought that was a nice this this idea of what if the child doesn't succeed in killing the family and such and yeah he seemed to be in agony and the the film kind of burning as well was a good you know just yeah, that was that was a really compelling visual. In general, this this used the the projected film so so well. You know, just the yeah the the various times that we saw the 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 recurring nightmare of the you know. Dylan there at, at the cornfield with, you know, with, with the, I, is that a side when it's, when it's that small? Yeah, you, you know, which is where we get really clearly into children of the corn kind of territory, but yeah, you know, standing there with that in his hand and screaming and then waking up, and then we see that all along it was his brother who was, which, I'll get more into that. I know that he was yelling, go, go, so he was like, and, you know, going along. It's still kind of cold to just leave so lying there. And then they throw, you know, just lie there to die. And he gets, you know, pushed by, by the table, you know, and, and they throw the golf clubs on him. That hurts. And that is considerable amount of strength, too. It, those things, yeah. You know, and, and that was a real nice... The golf clubs had only just been established the scene before or something, you know, so when, with, the, with the filming of the family. 
But yeah, I, I really liked how the ghosts now spot. I I was never really clear on what they were doing when we saw them in the first movie, except for you know when they were just watching the movies. But in this, their roles are you know completely clear, and the way they're used, it you know that again very children of the corn suddenly we have these terrifying creepy children and they've been there the whole movie we've seen them a lot and they've had lines they have names you know we we should almost be used to these imagine i mean we know that there's something horribly wrong even the i believe i believe it was the in the exposition dump early on that you know the the child would be made to yeah yeah you know, some of the culture said that the children would be made to kill their own families. So, we already know, the first time we see one of those things, even if you haven't watched the first movie, you know that kid murdered his family. And now he wants to show the snuff film that he recorded of it to this still living child. You know, so so we've had a lot of time to get used to the, the idea and the existence of these horrifying children and yet you know before that they weren't even all that horrifying they were just disturbing but now there's just these you know the the revealing where they are and and when when the girl spotted and and jumped down oh that was so creepy and it's it's right out of you know it's right out of a children's game it's like He's up here. Well, let's go, you know, like, you know, hide and seek or something. And it's just, it's so creepy because, you know, it's so real. We just saw a man lose fingers. So it's, yeah. And, and then them poltergeisting where we, it's very clear that only the twins can see them. And yeah, you know, the others can see what they do. They can see what they affect but, and, and it's also, it's an extraordinary circumstance. They were not supposed to make it out of the cornfield. They were not supposed to be rescued. And now the, you know, the, the camera is still running at that point. But, you know, it's only when the camera gets destroyed that it really, you know, but it is also, it's probably good that Bagul burnt him because really... <laughs> What exact if if he was still like coming at them would so really just have like I don't know smashed him with something that's I mean even even when he hit him with a car we didn't really see it we saw it from the you know POV which was awesome by the way now I don't think I don't really like the twist that. All this time, you know, they were showing the, you know, it was that thing of, you know, why did you, why did you choose him? Why, why didn't you choose me? And, you know, oh, you, you know, it's, you know, this thing of, you know, who's stronger and who's better. And, yeah, you know, and, and to both of them, you know, if you, if you say, if you tell, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kill you and your whole family will watch the movie over and over again. And... That was also some. I, when I watched in the trailer, I it didn't do a lot for me, but in the movie, it really worked. But yeah, the fact that they, you know, they spend all this time building up to, and it's it's probably again the first one, classical tragedy. So it's you know you know where this is going. In it, I mean, you may not realize. You're not supposed to realize very early that it's the children who murders the family. Yeah, but, you know, when the, the moment that you do realize, you know, you realize that it's going to be her, and then it happens, and then, yeah. And in, you know, so in this, when we spend so much of the time, you know, building up to, uh-oh, is... You know, is Dylan really going to actually murder them? You know, he's clearly not, you know, he keeps saying no. He keeps trying to turn away and say no movies tonight and such. 
and then it turns out that it's you know it's going to be Zach, and he's watching the film, and he's like you know completely jaded to the, you know which is this idea of you know the snuff film something you know it would be something that only the, the the people who would watch so much fake violence that they would only now be satisfied by real violence real murder and death you know that that would you know yeah that it would be for them the snuff film that you know Zach is standing there seeing that and just yeah, I don't. I don't think that was a very good twist. It, I'm not gonna say that I have much of an idea of what they could. You know, they they definitely they could not have just had the kid who you know who kept watching turn out to be the one who then also did because that would have been too obvious, too expected, and lacking the again classical tragedy element because it wouldn't be the father you know, ruining his family, it would just be the, you know, one of the sons, yeah, it wouldn't have the same effect. It, it needed something else if, if it was going to go for that. What I will say is I think that they did very nicely at establishing both brothers and their relationship to one another and to their mother and you know, from from very early, on, like the first thing we see them do, the when they're together. You know, first first we just see Dylan's nightmare, and then we see them play. You know, with the two toy guns, and you know, and it was it was a very nicely shot sequence. I really I was completely convinced that he was. You know, that they were gonna. Okay, now he's gonna spot the other one. Oh, wait, no, where'd he go? And this whole thing. And then, you know, they start arguing, oh, you know, oh, but you didn't say, you know, you didn't make the noise. And you know, then there are there are scenes where we don't see Zach so much, we see Dylan more. And so we kind of get more used to him and get more of a sense of him as this, you know, he's kind of you know, he, he pulls into himself some, and, you know, sometimes he looks down, and then he goes, oh, yeah, yes, mom, and, you know, and then we see that when he's looking down, one of the things he might be seeing is the Bagul symbol in horrible CGI, and what I think is supposed to be blood on the, what was, I think it was the church floor, and... Yeah, so, yeah, and and then there are scenes where we, we don't see Zach so much, and then when we do see them together, we, you know, more and more, they're like, you know, kind of fighting some, and then it gradually escalates very nicely that, you know, I had no idea that Zach was going to turn out to be just straight up this violent, and, yeah, I mean... Yeah, we have the argument early on, and I don't remember, but it probably is him who, you know, starts the kind of sort of fight there in the um, store. The, there's the bit with the toothbrush, or the, yeah, brushing each other's, brushing their teeth, not each other's teeth. I wonder if twins do that because you know people talk about it like they, they think the same thing and at times in this they think they seem like you know one says something and the other kind of also and then that might be useful maybe they could get a better sense of whether or not they're covering all angles note to self go back in time become twin brushing their teeth and you know one of them's like oh we, of course we know about the the church and then what happened in the church and then you know again kind of a little fight and then you're not special you know what I see them too you know and the you know and then he straight up yeah and and then he you know yeah it's awesome, and and then immediately the I I got I love Courtney. She's yeah, you know, 
Zari, what did you just call your brother? It's just, yeah, she's, she's great. And yeah, and then he straight up beats him up. And then, you know, he runs over to the, you know, to the, the lost children. And they're like, you don't deserve that. He, you know, you should do something and, and this whole thing. And yeah, it, it did a really nice job establishing the, the different ones, but yeah, I mean, I, I get it. It's like he, they, they really wanted Zack basically. And I don't know, I guess they, well, I guess it's possible that they did need to corrupt someone's innocence and maybe Zack wasn't innocent enough anymore. And so, you know, and, and it's, it's one of these loophole things where, well, technically it was the twin of the, you know, so, so one of the two twins loses his innocence. The other twin, you know, ritually murders the family. Yeah, it's a little bit iffy, but I think it's forgivable. So the, the, the first one sets up a very rigid scenario. And, you know, even the, the Simpsons video, he's like, you know, oh, well, what if someone moves in and there are no children? Or what if they, you know, it makes up a couple of, you know, yeah, examples of how, you know, you know, would nothing happen in this situation or such? And this one goes in and says, well, let's play around with that formula a little bit, because really... The elements that are established in the first one as having to be there are still there. A child is, you know, corrupted of its innocence. A child in the family will, you know, yeah, you know, attack the, you know, yeah. A, yeah, a child in the family who has lost his innocence will ritually murder his family and they move out, uh, back out of the murder house before the, yeah, before it goes horribly wrong and the, the ritual murders happen. So basically, you know, they didn't move back out because of fears about the murder house and Technically, the child who murdered, who tries to murder the family, was the twin of the one who was being corrupted by the, you know, the missing children. But nonetheless, yeah. And that is, of course, I mean, some people are going to say that that's, you know, BS, that's cheating, and I can see where they're coming from. But I think that it works. I think it, it, you know, it maintains just enough. I mean, that's, that's also the thing. They may not all have been, like, investigating. They might not all have realized that the other, you know, what happened with the other families. There, maybe there just were some strange disturbances and eventually they moved out because they thought it was creepy. And then it happened or the like, you know, it's the the element that is intact is that once you move into the house with at least one child, the missing children will try to corrupt that child and try to get him to murder the family when they move back out of that house. And I think even back into the house they lived in before, so they I wasn't entirely clear on whether this was the first place they went or because, I mean, she, did she take them very recently? I wasn't entirely clear on that, but yeah, this might be the first place that they went to. And so also, she's not exactly a woman who has a lot of different options, so this was just where they went. Now... I quite like the... how, how the missing children would build on the, you know, each of them said, you haven't watched, this is my film, you have to watch this one too, and, you know, 
you know, early on when he wants to quit, but you you haven't watched the best ones yet. They're they're still to come. And then, you know, the the Zach is the name. You know, he's like, I'm gonna make the best one yet. And that's yeah. And I really, really liked that this one that was one thing I noted about the first one, and that I still think is a little bit of an a problem with the first one is the we never see them make any home movies in the first one and I don't believe that they really would have and it seems like they're breaking the rules there because it seems like each time home movies were made and these home movies you know culminated in the missing child the the corrupted child killing the family on on tape and at the end of the first one we do see the murder going on you know in front of the camera but that's the first time we see anyone filming with that camera and I do think that the first one would have maybe been a little stronger if there had been and in this they actually do that and we see that in that's that's the great thing with this being a sequel, it can play with the fact that we already know that the people filming and the people killing are the missing children. Because several of these films do have this sense of these people don't know they're being filmed. At at you know, at times. Some some of the you know, home movie stuff does seem like, but, you know, some of it seems like, yes, yeah, somebody broke in. So somebody was filming these people through their, you know, the their living room windows and such. And it's creepy. It's stalkery. And in this one, we know from the start that these are the missing children. So when we see the films, we see the, you know, the child as part of the family, or we see the, the child walk back into the, the film, you know, at first it's like handheld, but then he places it on like a tripod, tripod, and then it walks in, and then, you know, serves him, oh, yeah, sure, why don't, you know, drink some, and then, you know, we know, we know from the first one, you know, when, when one of the corrupted children serves you, serves their family something, that's what it is, and then, you know, and Dylan also realizes that there at the end, you know, he sets up the camera, and that's really, this is a moment that the film has built to. We we knew that at some point either Dylan or Zach was going to end up in this situation, or we, we feared that that would be the outcome, that they would end up holding the camera, pointing it at the family, planning to murder them, and suddenly first filming and then placing it and then walks in and you know serves them ah, yeah, sure and and Dylan he knows and he grabs the phone and texts you know help us and yeah it was that was a fantastic idea and I mean for that for that element alone I think that this is you know with with horror sequels it's all always that they really need to exist the fact that this goes in and actually gives us that, you know, after we see all these finished films, we see one being made, that is well worth the, the movie existing for. When Clint goes up against the... Right from the start, we can sense that you know this is this is not a good situation. You know, he's he's brandishing the shotgun from right away, and it's like, are they near Florida? And you know, and it's, you know, that's what happens when you're no longer on the force, whether you quit or you were fired. You're suddenly on the receiving end of the violence, including the the weapon and being beaten when you have every right to be yeah. And I quite liked how 
we don't see a lot, we don't spend a lot of time with Clint, but they did a good job of building up and really working with the, you know, we, we know from fairly early on that she basically took the children away from him. And, you know, we get that little thing, well, you know, Clint would always eat, you know, before the rest of us. So, oh, I'm not Clint, so dig in, you know. And then he shows up and he's, you know, yeah, he's, he's clearly, you know, angry. But he's, you know, he's brought some law buddies to, to you know, make it look legit. I love so breaking the, the, I honestly didn't think that he was telling the truth about the, you know, big thing he was, but yeah, of course, makes sense that he would be a huge suspect, you know, the main suspect, and that even without that, it would be, you know, I mean, he did give a lot of material to Ellison, so yeah, and it, the, 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 the whole thing with him, you know, calling their bluff was just awesome, like, you know, so, so where's the sheriff, I'm, you know, we're, we're state troops, I know, I could tell from your van, but the sheriff should be here because this is that kind of thing. You know what? I will put you in my car. And you're going to arrest me. Yes. Well, you should know that I was arrested for something big before, but the, the, the charges were dropped. So if I were to be put away by you, it would really ruin your day. So just... Just so you know, just, yeah, yeah, that whole thing was just so good. And then, you know, he comes back with a court order and says, well, you know, people in the whole county work for me, so, or work with me or close to me, so, yeah, you know, and, yeah, so it's it's legit. It's, it's you know, he cheated, you might say, to get the, the court order, but... Yeah, he still did. Yeah, so, and and like he says, you know, either you come with me or you know, one way or another, the boys are coming with me. It's just either you stay here or you come with, you know. So, yeah, and then you know they're at at the table. It's you know he is, you know he he looks at Dylan. You 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 haven't eaten. Why well, haven't you eaten? You know, oh, you're gonna you're gonna need. Your, your energy for tomorrow, I've got big plans for us, you know, and then he, you know, grabs him and tries to shove the food down his throat and just, yeah, and, and then, you know, oh, boys need to eat, and then we see Zach is happily eating, and like, it's just, yeah, and the, you know, and, and, and he even does say, you know, Sorry, and tries to tries to wipe. You know, it's clear. I I really like. This could so easily have been just a complete one note. You know, one note. He is a more realistic character than he absolutely needed to be. You know, is the the fact that there is still that. You know, at at the end of the day, it basically he's just. He is. He has a very short fuse, he gets violent, and he has these ideas of what a man should be. And, yeah, that, you know, there's clearly still, you know, and, and that he, as a father, should have to, you know, be able to raise his boys, even, you know, no, no matter what. And, and this whole, yeah, it just, it, it really works. And the actor did great as well. And, yeah, and then, you know, after the, you know, he so tries to call Courtney. And then, you know, he he grabs the phone. That is that is just, 
you know, if if this was the first thing you saw this guy do, if if you walked into the movie and you just saw him picking up his wife, they're they're still married, I think, his wife's cell phone texting back and just leaving it in front of him. That is just right that that is such you know what's the word abusive you know abusive partner behavior you know he doesn't even he doesn't even ask he doesn't say who is that no he just grabs it texts back and yeah and the you know and and then when when so shows up at at the house and of course he does you know it makes sense that he says you're in danger and he's not wrong but yeah of course it gets taken the wrong way and yeah when I saw in the trailers that we were gonna get you know a dentist drill kind of you know I am. I, I was already like reticent, not not crazy about this, but but I'm really glad that they they treated it like the lawnmower in the first one. We hardly see it. It's it's just it's so brief. It's actually, you know, if if you watch this movie and you're like, I wanted more dentist drill action, watch the dentist. Now there's a tasteless movie. Now, when Dylan ran off and he hide, he hides like under this table, and it's like, do you think you're playing prisoner of war? This is this is not this is not gonna work. People are not gonna be tricked by this. I gotta say, I really really liked Courtney and So together. That was just so awkward and adorable and it's just you know this do you smoke no no I, this is a secret smoke because I'm a secret smoker just don't tell my boys I think I'm making her more southern than she is it I am very fond of a lot of southern culture so I don't always mean my southern accents to be negative but but yeah it's like it's, you know oh, it's, you know it, yeah it's, you know so don't don't tell my boys I won't. I'm not their father. <laughs> Oops, that was kind of weird. Yeah, kind of weird. I'm like, I wish you were. <laughs> They're just so adorable together. And then they, and it's like, you know, can, can, can't you stay? Or at least for dinner, you know. And no, no, you can stay. I mean, you can have the couch, and you know, and and they they really fall for each other and and kiss and the the whole thing. I mean. It just it works so well. You can really see how these people in this like, like she says, it's been so long since I felt safe. And at the same time, he's in this situation where he's spending a lot of energy specifically trying to stop bad things, you know, to yeah, to, to keep something awful from happening. And they even meet as he, you know, when when he first sees her, he's like, oh no, she has to stay living here or it'll be, you know, or one of her boys will murder her. So they they do have somewhat that kind of, you know, it's it's kind of the, you know, I'm thinking like on Lost with Jack, like you, you have to fix everything and to, yeah. You know, it, it almost gets into that territory, but not quite because he does genuinely also care about her he's not only focusing on the fact that she might be a murder victim he's also you know into her as a person and i just i love the way they meet i love just he he drives up you know and he he grabs these these gas cans and walks up and he steps on this little excuse me toy thing he's like what the and then he sees one of the boys and then he's like, oh, I'm not burning this house. And then he tries to run off. And then she catches him and it's like, you're on my property. And and she, of course, thinks that it's, 
that is one of Clint's. And he's like, you know, he, he keeps trying to explain it. It's like, just what, I don't have a lot, but I will give you what I can. What do you want to not, to, to go away and say you didn't find me? Coffee. What? I'd like some coffee, and I think there's been a huge misunderstanding. <laughs> I I feel bad for the guy having to do this entire act for a whole movie. I mean, he was he was a substantial supporting character in the first one, but now he's one of the two protagonists, and he's you know all these scenes where he's kind of awkward and a little insecure and a little dim and a little but but charming and just yeah. It, you know, obviously, I don't really see him returning for a third, given the whole ham radio thing. But, <laughs> yeah. And also, I mean, if they had, if they did a third, they would have to actually give him a name. Now that he's lost, you know, in the first one, he was Deputy So-and-So. And this one, he's listed on IMDb, as, when I checked at least, as Deputy. He's not a deputy in this movie anymore, so he no longer has any identity at all. Male protagonist. I guess that's one way to... And the... I quite liked... You know, the, the movie doesn't immediately announce that she's... And, and also wasn't clear from the trailers why she is alone with these two boys. And then, you know, over the course of the store scene, you know, you see these... You know, these people looking at her funny and it's like, you know, these are people that he talked into or maybe that the PI he sent talked into, you know, trying to block her and, you know, Rudebaker and they run and and such clever, you know, Batman touched my touch my boys. And it was what 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 did she tell you? And it's it's a little inappropriate to be using you know, abusing such a, but, but, you know, once you realize that it really, you know, she's just keeping them safe, is, yeah, and the, actually, I want to say about the, the, the relationship between the two twins was also very nicely, you know, Dylan, Clint keeps focusing on Dylan trying to make him reach this, you know, he, he has these standards, you know, the, why, why are you holding your arms like that? Why, what are you doing? You know, you know, he, he is going to teach his son to play golf, you know, whatever it takes. And just, and, and, you know, he ended up beating him up, sending him to the hospital and clearly, you know, and, and Dylan's now very withdrawn because of that. Meanwhile, Zach you know, as, you know, and, and there's in part that, you know, he's like, he's like his father. I didn't say, no, but we both know it. And, you know, and then you have this thing of, he actually, you know, he craves the attention. He's, he's trying to prove to Clint that he's better because he lives up to what Clint wants in a man, but he's, you know, he's getting constantly overlooked by Clint. So, you know, it's, it's very nicely characterized in the whole, yeah, all, all of the characters in the whole, yeah. And I think there was a, another thing with that. I just, maybe I'll remember later. I I don't think overall that I I when it comes to the the Christmas morning one where they're frozen I feel like it it it's on the wrong side of it's it's too too much it's it gets into kind of torture porn territory because it would take them a lot of hours to die like that. And at the same time, I have to admit, 
that one shot, I think it's the last of the of the Christmas morning one where you see one of the, you know, like the heads, you know, not moving frozen, and then you see the eyes move. That is horrifying. That is nightmare inducing because they're still conscious. They're still, but they can't move. And they're just waiting for their body to die because there's nothing they can do. They are far beyond even trying, you know, earlier we saw them struggling to get out of the rope while they were being buried in the snow. Now. I I quite like the opening bit with the the monster in the closet kind of scare. I thought that was a a good way to kind of you know even even in his bedroom he is uneasy you know and that is maybe also why he keeps leaving his bed. you know he keeps having this nightmare where he's murdering his family and then when he's awake he sees Bagul in the you know or wait was that a dream also anyway you know that was yeah and then yeah that was that was very nicely done this has none of the kids in the first one the actually i saw the that apparently the the whole family from the first one was supposedly back i don't know if maybe they cut something but i didn't see them anywhere in this any no new footage that yeah but yeah I don't think we saw them at all really only like paper newspaper clippings but yeah these are clearly not the same children and it might be because so has been going around burning these houses so maybe he's destroyed the you know they're they're no longer coming back or the like, you know that that was also also a really interesting line there at the, you know, when when the camera is destroyed, it's like, how you know we can't come back now or or something like that, and you know it is that thing of without the the tribute to Bagul, the you know the the portal is closed. They they need something to now. Nah. That covers the notes. I was wondering if this one would maybe have a, you know, a, a climax involving Bagul or the like. And I'm really glad that instead they opted for fighting back against one of the murderous children, one a corrupted child, and one we've also been following the whole movie. That was, yeah, you know, that was something that I heard people criticize the first four, and I can kind of see it, The, but the first one really could not have had a climax of a, you know, it, it kind of, it's you know, the first one just ends with, we, we realized that they were being, yeah, we, we realized that, that the whole family is going to be murdered, excuse me, by the daughter, and, excuse me, then we see that that is what will happen, and, and that's it. You know, it, there really couldn't have been a way for there to be, it, it wouldn't have fit the for for the first one and that you know it it is a little bit of what was it i think someone someone said it it made for a flat ending and yeah that is true and then for them to in this one make sure that there was again doing things different from the first and trying to get something interesting get something else interesting out of the concept and I like how this is still very much, you have to invite the evil in, you know, you, if you, you know, Dylan kept turning away. He kept refusing to 
you know, and it was, but yeah, but, but he still watched, what was it? He watched all but the, but the last of the films. He, he didn't watch the dental one. And man, that I, I, I'm not going to forget that face for a long time. Dylan just watching it and being completely unfazed. Man, that was creepy. Now, the... But, but yeah, the... The way that... I do think that, and I felt this from the trailers as well, that they, they tried a little too hard to make the the snuff films more unusual, more like exotic. Where in the first, they're very much just yeah, typical you know family. For, yeah. I mean, the fact that this is very clearly, I mean, I don't remember. Yeah, the first is somewhat southern, you know, between Fred Thompson and the whole sheriff thing, and yeah, but it didn't feel the need to go quite that, so, you know, in this we have alligators, and just, yeah, you know, where in, in the first it's very much just these typical family, classic kind of family, you know, experiences, you know, the, the family car, and then suddenly they're burning it, the the tree that they all play around and suddenly they're they're hanging from it you know they're they're drowning in the you know the the family pool and you know run over by the lawnmower and and such and these yeah these these are things that we can recognize but this this thing of you know going out and fishing and then there's an alligator it's just it makes it too regional maybe it's it's yeah it's it's a little too outlandish as far as and and i also say you know these are very much these these are you know i i would say that torture porn is when what you're watching is people being inflicted pain not just fear but being, you know, the, I mean, I've, I've tried to avoid most of the torture porn movies, but, you know, you know, having watched reviews of stuff like Hostel and the, I want to say, crap, I don't remember what it's, but, but yes, yeah, something like that, where it's very distinct, you know, this is about watching people being tormented, you know, that, you know, so yeah, literally torture porn. I think you, you cross into that when it is, you know, extreme pain or fear of pain, prolonged pain, and, you know, yeah, basically like, you know, suspended and then someone using, you know, doing something to, to, just to to make them feel extreme pain that basically where you know what i'd say doesn't quite cross the line to that is when what we're seeing is a fear of a painful but also very brief death and you know yeah the 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 ones in the first i mean you could say that the the lawnmower you know takes a while but and and they're lying there afraid as they hear it approach but then when they when it does get there they die very very quickly and it's just for example the alligator it you know i mean we see it it gets one of them and then another it's just they can be hanging there for many hours before anything happens and they don't know which is next and and this whole thing. I, I feel like that crosses the line into that and the the you know the one where they're freezing to death as well and you know but but I do think that the one with electricity 
I don't remember exactly what that the films were called, but in this where they use electricity to, you know, I thought I also thought it was fairly well realized visually, but yeah, I, I think that one was a well thought out one because also, you know, electrocution, that's something everyone can relate to. That's not an alligator biting you while you're hanging upside down. And yeah, it's, you know, even they, they know it's coming and, you know, but, but the moment it, you know, it does not take you very long to die from, not, not if it's consistent and a very high voltage. You know, I mean, this is, and, and still, don't get me wrong, this is an extremely painful death. I mean, there, there's a reason that it is considered one of the, you know, the, the electric chair is considered one of the worst, you know, forms of punishment that one can imagine, the worst, one of the worst ways to die by the death penalty. But it is still something that works as, you know, we, I mean, of course, we, we don't know how long they spent, you know, waiting for him to do that, but I, I would still say there's there's a line being crossed in in some of the others and the one with the the rap in in addition to it for for one thing it can take a long time if it doesn't if it only opens a large hole in the stomach which it of course does then they're just gonna bleed out and that can take hours it's only if the rat punctures like the heart or the lungs, something really vital that you can't live without for even minutes, that it would, so that again, and also just the method there, again, the ones in the first and some of the others in this, they are just things that, you know, you might say, like, you know, murderers would do, some or something you fear would, you know, everyone can relate to burning to death or, you know, fear of burning to death. And and the image of someone being hanged is also very, you know, gruesome, but without it being... But, you know, rats eating... I mean, this is, literally, this is something that I think Mafia would, would use on the worst of the worst. It's just, it's too extreme. And I think that the first did extreme well. Now, does that, let's see, and then there's in this one also being burned on the cross, and that one, that one is also basically fine, and, and the, it is, one thing I will say about it, like the ones in the first, it's a good image, it's something you don't forget, you don't forget, yeah, you know, the, the ones in the first, and being burned on a cross, and it's, Again, and it's evocative imagery because a burning cross is a very, you know, yeah, it really gets a reaction from us. So, yeah. And I suppose that pretty much covers that. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.